Okay. Yeah. So your goal today is. Yes. So I, I think my goal today is I, I definitely now know that I can do it, you know, so it's the first part. Uh, I think my, to, to get to my next part of my goal is just to, uh, to, to remove the poverty consciousness and to know that I can be, you know, prosperous and I, that I can make money, you know, pursuing, um, uh, you know, this part of my career, which is focused more on uh, the energy healing and the, uh, you know, that part of stuff and pursuing that um, in terms of doing more research and, and try to ed educating um, the public. On that. More like holistic healing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I forgot to turn the light on. Um, so yeah. So anyway, like I noticed that there's a huge shift, a difference in you from our previous session because like you're like um, I don't know, like uh, are you sleepy? Are you okay? <laughs> oh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I noticed, I know you don't notice it, but um um, so the magnetic recode, it's the uh, Chris Duncan, the uh, the founder, he always says behavior is um the highest form of information so based on what I, I saw you had changed a lot since uh, just the uh, three months or four months since we did the mm -hmm. recode and everything else the coaching yeah yeah and uh, what have you noticed so far though yeah so what I've noticed so far is that I, I definitely can do it I, I think that before I was I just I just didn't have the confidence because I never took the action. But now mm -hmm. that I'm taking the action, I'm starting to realize that, you know, um, I, I've been getting good feedback and that now kind of is a feedback loop, positive feedback loop, you know, giving me the confidence and making me feel more comfortable, first of all, but also um making it uh, much more possible for me to achieve my bigger goals, which is to um, basically make this more of my career, which is, you know, serving people through education and, and teaching um, on energy healing. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to share it, but um, is there like a monetary goal like a certain uh, figure or amount you don't have to say uh say it to me you just have to think about it yeah uh-huh yeah i do and what is the end image um so the end image is you know the the image that you've already accomplished the goal so mm -hmm. i want you to think about three end images okay yep so related to your goal, like, like, let's say, for example, me, right? Like uh, I write books. So of course my end image would be like to connect to readers. So, and it has to be an end image is the end result that you want, but it yeah. has to involve the five senses. Like, what am I doing? Where am I? Um, what do I feel? Especially the feeling. And what do I hear? What do I mm -hmm. see? So it has to be like very very um uses the five senses only because the subconscious mind it works better if you add feelings and you if you include the five senses as opposed to just visualizing without like just you know regular visualizing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so think of like three end images related to the goal yep. um, so I was just coaching someone before and she had like three goals about her health. So she was like her end image. She had three end images related to her goal about like healthy, healthy living, healthy diet and stuff like that. So she had three pictures in her head mm -hmm. or end images related to her goal. So just think about them and just, um, think about it just three and then we'll do it after the recode okay oh yeah and just to recap so the recode is basically so we have remember the three memories the super conscious 
the unconscious and the uh, self-conscious. So yes. super conscious is our higher self connected to the field. Um, it's connected to source energy connected to everybody else. That's the higher consciousness. And then there's the unconscious or the subconscious, which controls um, automatic responses. It controls um, what you call that. It controls um, programs, you know, programs. Uh, memories are stored in there from birth until the present moment and then there's the unconscious which is so the unconscious mind is uh oh no self-conscious mind i mean is from you know the time you were self-conscious like maybe three or four years old until the present moment mm -hmm. but the thing about the self-conscious it's only looks to the past and or the current moment but it has difficulty like projecting forward because it looks at like what happened, you know? Okay. Is it uh, yeah. familiar? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the super conscious um, recode is basically it knows everything. So let's say you have an issue right now. You said it's prosperity, right? Yes. So this is just a, a simple explanation of it. So the way the super conscious works is that it's connected to seven generations of memories, seven gen mm. like seven ancestral generation generational um, memories. So we can tap into that. So the super conscious has that, um, like the eagle's point of view. Mm-hmm. And so it it knows. So when we do the recode right now related to prosperity, yeah, we'll know like maybe it was from your grandparents that started the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. No. I sometimes I I close my eyes because I listen better <laughs> with my oh. eyes. Oh. That's what. That's why I, I'm I'm doing it. I do that all the time. Are you well, auditory? To notice that I do that all the time. Your auditory learner. Yeah. I think I'm both auditory, kinesthetic, and um, visual as well. It depends. Yeah, I can switch. <laughs> so yeah, so um, so the superconscious recode will know exactly at what point in time may it be in this present moment or present lifetime, or could be a grandparent that you know maybe had issues with money. So uh, I'll illustrate like what happened in my family. So. Currently, our family always has issues with land, you know, like uh -huh. land grab or like struggles with land or like trying to deal with land amongst family members. And I found out from my grandfather that my great great grandfather actually he killed a relative over land. Oh, okay. so so that sort of trauma and that sort of like guilt probably it can be passed on to the succeeding generations because I kid you not there's really no reason why everybody would just be fighting over over land mm -hmm. but in uh, my mom's um not necessarily in our generation but in my mom's generation they're like literally will like maybe will kill for the land you know what I mean mm, wow yeah and that's just a pattern that can be passed on and that can be memories you know trauma especially something like that and other cultures they call it um karma like family karma yep mm -hmm. or the family tree patterns or whatever okay yeah okay. so now so now we're just gonna settle in and we're gonna do the super conscious free code um so what i'm gonna do is i will tap into your super conscious and just think about um, your goal, which is, mm -hmm. um, it has to be specific though. Um, yeah. So specific, like, do you, we, do you want to earn a specific amount or like, do you have a quota or, um, you know, another word you can use is, do you want to be profitable, you know? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think I want for sure I want to be profitable by at least and do you mind if I say it or do you want to keep it keep it to myself um no I think you should just keep it to yourself because okay it's, um a recording yeah got it okay mm -hmm. and 
but before we do that though just because yeah. we have to satisfy our conscious mind as well yeah um that we see patterns as well like consciously um do you notice any patterns uh, if you remember in my workbook so there was like family patterns do you notice any patterns in your family somehow that is like identical to yours situation right now yeah i, I think that there's a general you know um savings consciousness like we're very conservative we try to save in every aspect you know whether it's uh expenses or or treating yourself you know i think that there's always this theme of trying to save as much as possible and getting the most value as possible, which is good, but then also kind of limits on the advice on the other end, like prosperity, limiting on how much you can earn and, you know, how much in the frequency of that earning. And so I feel like it, it goes both ways. So that's why I feel like it has sort of capped or limit my, you know, um, ability to accept and receive prosperity yeah and that can be cultural as well um just because uh you you do come from like a chinese descent like a yeah. background right i think yeah. that's very cultural as well um um as well like you know the consciousness with being conscious about money yeah and also you have to look at their time period as well they they did uh especially in like two generations above us or before us um they had a lot of you know like maybe they went through a depression like a, a famine or something like that right yeah so um uh, but unfortunately that like trauma or that event or that whatever the recession going through that recession can get passed on because just mm -hmm. because of that fear mindset yeah Yep, fear. Okay, do you feel that, uh, do you feel that it's fear-based, uh, this, um, you know, this mindset? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's definitely the fear of, you know, not having enough and always looking for more, you know. And so what do you want, like, exactly, like, if you can, um, really like verbalize exactly what you want knowing this pattern this family pattern of not having enough um yeah i think that what i really want is to be able to um you know with the area of work and and, and myself to receive and also give abundantly and prosperous pro prosperously so um, because I know in order to give you have to receive and I definitely have the ability to give and I think I really need to work on the ability to receive and work on creating again work and a system to receive through what I want to do through my career and I just want to you know um make something like a service or a product or something that really gives people value and I can, you know, feel comfortable about charging them, you know, properly and then receiving that money too. Oh, yeah. yeah I think that's the problem with most healers, myself included. We always shortchange ourselves. Yeah. Because we don't feel that, you know, we want to help people, but then we have that mindset that, um, you know, if I offer maybe a great di deep discount, maybe I'm gonna gonna help this person more. But right. yeah, uh, based on my experience as well, the thing is, if you offer something for free, they they most likely will not be appreciative of what you went through, like in order to give that product. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm not saying it's everybody. So you want to basically charge like the right price or because we got Yeah, I, I, I definitely have worked on charging the right price. I think now it's just being more um being more consistent about it. So um with with anyone I see, whether it's a patient, a client, to charge that price and not to uh 
waiver or like like you said you know give discounts because i you know i feel bad for them or you know for their x y and z situation um and then to just scale from that right because i know i have a target profit margin in mind every month so i need to hit that number and in order to hit that number i have to scale so um, i just have to do that consistently so basically you have you want to charge a fair amount consistently yeah charge fair amount consistently so that you know that's one way i see myself um you know achieving my prosperity goal yeah. so, do yeah. you have like a lot of clients too is that part of your goal to attract more clients or yeah i, I think i definitely have a, a base um but definitely there's a lot of room to grow so in you know for the lifestyle and for the things that i want to do i think that definitely i again i would have to scale that to meet you know um in order to 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 pay for the lifestyle that i want to live okay yeah, yeah. so maybe after this call as well what we're you're gonna do you have to really define the lifestyle as well um i did like a program before um so he was pretty specific about it um basically just say um you know getting everything in order like what you earn how much and and then how much you want to earn so he was very specific about like he had a whole system okay. which i think it gives your conscious mind some satisfaction because you're giving it a target Mm -hmm. like this is what I currently earn right now but this is what I want to earn and then you just say um, the way you do it is you like yeah because I want to earn maybe three or four times what I'm currently earning right now and that will give your conscious mind sort of like a, a, a place to jump start or like a jumping point yeah yeah rather than just saying like I don't know what amount like you that's the way the conscious mind you have to satisfy all three aspects of yourself your unconscious mm -hmm. um and your conscious mind as well so the conscious mind wants figures it wants like what is it you know <laughs> give me a figure and i'll yeah. work towards it because you want all parts of you your your part personalities all aspects of yourself to work in tandem towards that goal mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so we're going to start the super conscious recode. Okay. Um, if you can close your eyes. Yep, that's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to connect to your super conscious. So is it safe and okay to connect to Jason's super conscious to create treatment for more satisfaction in life? It says a yes. And okay. What is the priority super conscious? It wants to join. Okay, so let's do super conscious. So super conscious. Please treat the resistance of not charging consistently for a fair amount to Jason's clients. Okay, thank you. You can open your eyes now. How do you feel? Uh, I feel better. I feel a lot lighter, a lot clearer. Did clearer you feel it? Back. Yeah. So what do you think like were the parts of you that like, you know, the part personalities, part personalities, was it what type of, um, I'm just gonna go over it. What do you think it is though? Um, is it the personality that's a protect, protector, controller, inner child, pleaser, wounded, or perfectionist? Which one is it? Um, I think I definitely think there's definitely a couple, but I think the perfectionist part stands out. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned systems though earlier. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, sometimes I think I overthink things because I want it to be perfect. And wow. by the time I take so long thinking about it, that I don't actually do it. Rather, if I just do it and make the mistakes doing it, I can make more progress. 
that way. So, yeah. There was actually, um, this was based on, I've read so many books and listened to many audiobooks. Anyway, this is based on a true story. So um, there was this professor in like art class, um, you know, like, like pottery class. So he had a class of people, so he divided it. So the, the part A was like the class that only did um, their assignment was to make as many potteries as they can, like practice and then, you know, practice as much as they can and then deliver the final result. Whereas the, uh, the second group were just asked to make one pot, that one pottery, like one ceramic pot or something. And so what happened was the, uh, the people, the group A that was made to ask to do as many potteries, like, you know, practice, practice, practice. What happened was that their, their pottery like became perfect. At first it was really bad, but because they had so much practice, mm -hmm. um, they actually produced better pots as compared mm -hmm. to the other, the other group that only knew theory, but you know, they applied the theory, but they didn't have the practice of making the perfect pottery. Their, their pots were like horrible. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what, so the, the lesson is you get into perfection by, you'll have 10 minutes. We get into perfection and the state of perfection through trial and error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, right, exactly. So... Yeah, and I think that's going to be in in your journey, I guess. It's just a lot of trial and error, probably. And yeah, just learn as you go. And that's it, you know, mm. basically. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a... Oh, yeah. Um, before we leave, I'm going to teach you... Um, so remember the three images I mentioned? Yes. So we're going to do... Um, it's a visualization you can do every day. Uh, I don't know if you have my, um, I don't know if you downloaded my action planner. I have a new, do you have an action planner? It's in my store. Um, I don't recall if. I'll send you the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I think maybe I did. I have to. Download. I think you have the workbook, but I don't know if you had the action. The action planner is basically like taking action every day. And uh -huh. so there's like prompts, like what to write okay yeah so, it, i use it on myself i actually made one for myself i printed it out and i bought like a binder okay oh so, yeah i'll show it to you um and then we'll do the wait the visualization let me show it to you first thank you <laughs> so i print out one one Sorry, Mrs. Can you see? I don't know. That's kind of weird. I have to remove the background, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I have to double check. I don't recall. Yeah, so basically it has, you know, like an action, like for the year, for the uh -huh. day, for uh -huh. the for the year, for the day, for the month, for the week, quarterly. Okay. And, and it's really good. I, I use it and it's a combination of all the things I'm using. I just put it in one planner. Um, yeah. So basic part of the, the action planner is every day you have to visualize. You have to do your like checklist, visualization, clearing, whatever you do. So we're gonna visualize right now. So this one, I learned it from Chris Duncan. Uh, okay. So remember the three end images I told you about? So we're going to close our eyes and think about the first picture that I told you to think about earlier that's related to your goal. Yep. So what do you see, feel, hear, taste, or anything that is sensory uh, related to your uh, primary or first picture, first end image. You want me to describe it? 
Um, no, just in your mind, try okay. to think about it. So try to think about that end image. Where are you exactly? What are you doing? What are you feeling? Um, do you sense anything? And I want you to take a snapshot, like a photograph of that end image. And I want you to project that photograph, remove it and move it towards uh, from your mind and move it to your dominant hand. And as you're placing it on your dominant hand, that picture, that snapshot, I want you to feel it in your dominant hand. And then what you're going to do is from your dominant hand, you're going to float it in front of your forehead or your brow chakra, that picture, that snapshot. And I want you to move that inside your head, but in the middle or on the back of your head. So put that picture in the back of your head, could be in the middle, back part. Okay. And how about your second end image? What is the second end image related to your goal? Now I want you to men mentally project it outside of your mind and into your dominant hand as a snapshot or a picture frozen in time, like it's a snapshot. That end image, put it on your dominant hand until you feel some weight on it. And then float it back to the front of your forehead. And move it inside of your head, like in the middle part of your head or the back of your head. And notice though, uh, where you wanna place it. Do you wanna place it in front of the uh, first image or at the back of the first image? Okay, just take note where you wanna place it on your head or in your head. And then think about the third end image. And take a snapshot of that and move it to your dominant hand as it's uh, sitting on your dominant hand, feel the weight of it, feel it on your dominant hand and then float it in front of your forehead and place it inside of your head at the back of your head we're in the middle, middle part. So notice though where you want to place it. Do you want to place it in front of the two pictures or do you want to put it in between or in the back of the first picture? So just notice where you want to place it. Okay. And open your eyes. And how do you feel? Are you okay, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, do you feel it? Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. So that's an advanced like visualization tool. You can use that every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so on your like daily, um, because you're supposed to do the action planner, like every day you're just supposed to, there's like prompts there, um, but it's part of it, visualizing your end image and just mm -hmm. working on it for, you know, 60, 90 days or up to six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, okay. fo just focus on that one goal. So just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's a nice, it's a nice like visualization, right? Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. I was just so settled into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to continue to do that as well because I feel like my head like filling up. Do you feel it? Yeah, I mean, it was automatic for me, yeah, so it was great. Yeah. Because the way that, um, another way that the subconscious mind works, it not only in end images or pictures, but 
Uh, if you actually visualize, put your visualizations inside of your brain at the back of your head, uh -huh. like, you know, um, it just works better. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Like you say, you're not putting it outside of yourself. You're putting it inside of yourself. And that like, it's a slide, you know, like a slide. Yeah. It, it's yeah. more like projecting it. Right, right. In, instead of the images projecting outside, you're projecting it from the inside to the outside. Yeah. Yeah, because the back part of the brain is the where the eyes, the visual sensor is. Oh, that's yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh -oh. the pivotal one. I think it's ending already. It's just we have less than one minute. And just let me know. And if you need, like, one more session or something, just let yeah. me know. Okay. And Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. This has been amazing as always. I know. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hopefully, um, just let me know if there's any results. I'll continue. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely update you. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you, Jen. Bye. Bye.